to a lot of issues there. I mean, those raised by Mr. Ogunshea and those raised by members of the House of Representatives. First of all, they believe the federal government has taken a unilateral decision on how it wants to spend this money without the approval. How do you react to that? Well, the decision to put the money in cash transfers is a decision taken by the Attorney General working with the Minister of Finance. I have to trust that they actually have done the right thing. I am just the office that disperses these funds. I do not believe that it was illegal. I do not believe that this money ought to have been taken to the um, consolidated. consolidated revenue fund. And I actually am convinced that this is the best way to actually and um, to get to the grassroots. I mean, studies show all over the world that when you invest in the bottom pyramid is when GDP grows. Mm. When you uh, invest in the upper, it, the GDP doesn't grow. Mm. And either two, we've always ignored the people that, act, that need just that small stipends. You, you and they are taking ownership of their lives. The key word there is investment. Yes. Uh, the, the point Mr. Ogunshaya was raising is whether or not the manner in which we're, you know, going about this a cash transfer is actually an investment whether eventually people will be empowered or they will continually depend on uh, the stipends being given by the federal government how would you respond to that it is an investment it's an investment in our people and it is it is only proper that the country is now looking to supporting them it's in our interest as he said and I agree totally it's going to support our economy um, we're, we're fortifying, we're strengthening them, getting them to take ownership of their lives. And the stories are out there. If people would bother to, to, to go and reach, we have all the communities that we're in. And it's not 20 states. It's, we have a register now in 24 states, and we're growing. We have enumerators now in 10 more states taking down the information. We had challenges with some of the, um, some of the states. Because some of the states wanted, us, wanted to just give us lists of people. And we said, no, we have a framework, and we have to go to the community. Some of the states gave us civil servants or politicians or relatives in those offices. We scrutinized the, 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 the um, CVs to make sure that they're not just being put there because they're, they're, they have some connection or the other. Mm. You know? And so this has slowed down. And then the training takes time and they step down the training also to community level so all of that has you know we've been doing it in 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 in, in a sequence mrs Suez, let me get you clearly first of all you say that they're close to three hundred thousand that are being paid that are being paid but we have over 1.5 4 million on the register already 1.4 million people individuals. individuals households we have about 503,000 503,000 across 24 states across 24 states but you're only currently paying yes. 300 close to 300,000 individuals no, no. Or yeah, well, caregivers in a household because we have to be strategic we're addressing consumption so the caregiver is the person that we're training and the caregiver goes to the market is able to um, address what the family needs for, 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 to stretch the money. Mm -hmm. And this 5,000 Naira is actually based on a calculation on calories, you know, and it's to avoid dependency. Mm. So I was going to ask you, yes. how long do you think that, because if you, the register is going to grow and people, you know, we don't know how long they're going to, they're expected to stay on that register, how long do you hope uh, they'll be there before you finally wean so them off the register. Every three years, we're going to be reviewing the register. That's why we're building capacity within the state and in the local government. They will review because they, the community facilitators, know each and every caregiver. And they go there and they talk to them. And once we're able to review every three years, we wean off those who have taken ownership of their lives. And it's interesting that already, I mean, after a year, we have women who have started pigeon looking after pigeons looking after goats buying goats with their is money is that a product of the training that you yes, talked about or? yes okay yes they're actually being trained to save they're forming savings groups and they're doing things with their lives their children are back in school and we have many i mean maybe it's an it's a, it's, it's a factor of publicity 
and I admit we should be more public about what we're doing, but we feel very strongly that we should be allowed to, to conduct this process because the data is critical if, for us. If the cash transfer is being done in conjunction with training, the question of course would be what are the aspects of training? I mean, how tangible are they in terms of uh, skills acquisition or empowerment? What we're doing now is financial training because a lot of these women, I mean, many of the poor are actually very weak also. They're very vulnerable. Some of them are blind. Some of them are, uh, have incapacitated um, relatives that, that, that they depend on, I mean, that depend on them. You know, so many of them are not able to, like, participate in a company, um, as he suggested. And w yes, if we have that capacity at that level, why not? But we're encouraging them to form savings groups and then take decisions as to what would uh, enable them graduate out of poverty. So they're doing businesses, their children are back in school, and, and that, that, I mean, you should listen to the... the, the, to the I'm just wondering, I mean, because there is a generality um, to talk that this money was taken away from Nigerians, not just poor Nigerians. I mean, it was taken away from the generality of, the, of Nigerians. Now, you talked about the conditionality and why, you know, the federal government has chosen this particular program. But there, as you rightly said, there are a plethora of pr programs that the World Bank is involved in here in Nigeria. Uh, why haven't we taken a number of them? Why have we focused solely on this particular program? Well, for instance, the, 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 um, the, the World Bank has programs in the Northeast. The decision was taken that we have to put this where it will go around the entire country. And of all of the programs that the World Bank is doing, this is the one. Because it also has a YESO program, Youth Empowerment Program, it has a Community Development Program. They were actually under the Ministry of Finance before, the Ministry of Finance. Once we started this work, they asked that they relocate those, the World Bank asked that those um, two programs be relocated to the Social Investment Office because they want to use the National Register. And you know, beyond the National Register, data that we're collating includes nearest primary school, nearest secondary school, nearest primary healthcare center, access roads, connectivity, and we're very conscious of the fact that we don't have a mandate to build schools. But what we do is we go to the governor and we say, in 60% of the communities we're in, there's no primary school within three kilometers. No family is going to allow their child to trek for four kilometers to get to a school. So you need to be strategic about where you build your infrastructure. We've gone to the NCC. There are issues of connectivity. You need to roll out aligned with where we're going. We know where we're going, right? And we want to be able to do um, transfers on the phones, through smart cards, but there are issues of connectivity. So we are using cash at the last mile. But right now, we procured, in a transparent process, mobile money agents, mobile money operators, sorry, and they have agents in the field. So they are the ones we're working with. And, I mean, you could call them and interview them. They go to the communities where these people are because it doesn't make sense that if you're taking 5,000 that you need to travel to to where there's banking infrastructure. Banks don't go to where there's poverty. Banks only go where there's productivity.